Hey everybody, welcome to 3 Minute Thursdays. It's your source of animal rights news and gossip all packed into a short sweet 3 minutes and everyone's favorite day. And naturally, it's a Thursday. If you want to go ahead and hit that subscribe button, turn on the bell notification. As always, follow along on Facebook, Instagram, and the Twitter. That would be fantastic. It'd be a lot of fun to see you there. Also, hit me up on my Patreon. We're giving away 100% of all the Patreon money. Where that money goes is voted on 100% by the patrons. Last month, we donated $970 to um, Fuzzy Butt Rescue, a great name, but also a great cause. They've rescued over 600 chickens in the last few months from um, a farm. And those chickens are being driven all over the country, put in new homes, getting medical care and food that they need. So if you wanna know more about that project, I'll drop the links down below. But if you wanna help out projects like that every single month by turning two of your dollars into $970, um, join us over the Patreon. So uh, there you go. So is it petty for me to say, I told you so? He took all of your thousands and thousands of dollars and he flew to Panama in the middle of a pandemic to apparently meet with an investor about investing in a green energy cryptocurrency. And the investment opportunity that I'm talking about is in cryptocurrency. It is EWT, the Energy Web Token. I mean, okay, so that's like my one petty moment for the day, uh, maybe. All right, let's do some house cleaning before I get busy making you all angry with me once again, uh, week after week. First off, if you're here to tell me that James Aspie has done a lot for animals, don't just post that, all right? Because my response is gonna be the same thing I always respond with, which is, what has he done? And, and wait, and, and I already know what your response is to that. Uh, your response is going to be, well, he's gotten some, you know, random number of people to go vegan. And my response to that always is, uh, prove it. How many people has he got to go vegan? Are they still vegan? Do they ever go vegan in the first place? Or did they just say that to stop that irritating conversation? Are you confusing plant-based with veganism? And finally, your response to all that is gonna be, uh, well, we don't know, how could we possibly know? And my final response to that is gonna be exactly, we don't know. Is educational outreach important? Absolutely. Is it gonna make the change we wanna see in the world? Just like any tactic by itself, no, it's not. And the faster I think that we can get over that hurdle, the better off we all are gonna be. Am I happy you're, you're vegan because of James Aspie or Gary Urofsky or Earthling Ed or Joey Carbachong or even me? Like, of course, I'm stoked. Am I under the illusion that's making the change we need to see? No, no, I, I'm, I'm not, okay? Let's get down to it. There's been a lot of discussion the last week or two about, you know, the details about this and details about that. And so it's, you know, pick, pick, pick and all that stuff. And it's all legitimate, but let's not muddy the waters with things that take away from the main issue here. And to me, the main issue is that social media influencers are using their pedestals in the animal rights and the vegan movement to take advantage of their followers. And currently there is no more blatant example than this get rich scheme that centers around James Aspie. This get rich scheme, you know, really comes on the heels of this shift for James to start using the word Holocaust in, in his outreach. And people really argued, you know, back and forth on that issue, but really stuck to the idea of like the definition of the word Holocaust and not so much about its place in today's like lexicon or, or, or cultures or societies, or even if it was like an effective thing to do. It was really about the definition of the word Holocaust and does it apply? So let's look at the definition of another word, donate to give like money or goods for a good cause. For example, to a charity. Okay, so if you spend a bunch of years asking tens of thousands of your followers of people to give you money to save animals, to give money to educate people on uh, animal use or the importance of veganism. Uh, and then one day you say, if anybody has ever wanted to donate to me, now would be the best time. It is quite realistic to believe that like another donation to you would be going towards that same charitable work. And when asked about these donations that are like shrouded in mystery that no one can know what it's for, just send money. If your response is, why do I need to take it? Because I want the animal Holocaust to end. You have now given the very clear impression what that money is for. In fact, when it starts to leak that perhaps the money isn't for activism, but rather an investment, you again, deny it. But fast forward to a week or two and... Yo, what's up everybody? I am very, very excited to share with you the investment opportunity that I've recently put in every single dollar, basically, of my life savings. Which leads us to another definition. Con. 
to persuade someone to do or believe something, typically by the use of a deception. Let's dive into that a little deeper by looking at the situation as far as we know it, right? So James Aspie tells you he needs donations urgently, to which his followers agree and send him thousands of dollars. He then takes that money and adds it to his entire life savings, whatever that may be, and he goes all in on energy web tokens, which is a green cryptocurrency. He then flies to Panama, known for being one of the best places in the world for financial secrecy. James then encourages everyone to invest as much as they possibly can into this energy web cryptocurrency, but also admits that he knows nothing about this stuff, despite investing his entire life savings into it. I have no idea what all this stuff means. So at this point, I'm thinking like, do you really put every last dollar you have on, on, on something you don't know anything about? That's like putting, you know, everything you have on one number on the roulette wheel. Always bet on black. Wesley Snipes generally has sound financial advice. Okay, he's not only dumped all of his money into it, but now he's encouraging you to do the same. And what's this all based on? Advice he's taken from his fellow shirtless bro in the struggle, Randy. So I'm here with my homie Randy. Yo, what yo. up, big dog? Yo. So Randy's the chart, man. I have no idea what all this stuff means, but Randy's very good at this. Honestly, the first thing I would have suggested they invested in uh, may have been a couple of t-shirts. Okay, Randy, who has described himself as James's fund manager, has told them all they will make millions of dollars off this deal. But how does Randy know that? Well, here's the kicker. He doesn't. I promise you it's fucking worth it. We trust you. <laughs> I think at this point I established you guys trust me in a few ways. You literally flew halfway around the world trusting me with yeah. an insane amount of money with a company none of us really know. <laughs> But let's be fair, like maybe Randy's a guy that is rooted in smart decision-making skills and logical deduction. So let's take a look at maybe some of his public Facebook posts to get a sense of what kind of guy he is. Okay, so he thinks that the popular musician The Weeknd, who you may have seen on the Super Bowl halftime show recently, is part of a group of people who are harvesting chemicals from the blood of kidnapped children in order to then drink it. Okay. He also believes that there are videos of Hillary Clinton cutting off her own face and drinking her blood because they are puppets of a cabal. And that same cabal uh, that says George Floyd wasn't murdered by the police, but rather was sacrificed by Freemasons and satanic cults. But, but who's here to stop the cabal? Well, uh, Randy's man crush, Donald Trump. That's right, James Aspie is encouraging us to join him in investing our entire life savings on the recommendation and financial advice of a QAnon supporter. Okay, so let's say you still want to invest, but you're not quite sure where to start. Well, James and Randy are here to help you out. They have set up a private Facebook group to teach you how to do it. The only thing is you'll have to send $25 to James through his personal PayPal account, then send the receipt of that payment to Randy, and then he'll grant you access to the group. Um, and from there, you will learn the ways of cryptocurrency and how to buy it and sell it and, and, and apparently make millions. So hypothetically speaking, what happens if a bunch of us invest into Energy Web? Well, in theory, the price goes up, right? Get enough people to continue to invest and it will go up even more. Maybe we invest a couple hundred bucks or a couple thousand bucks and we double our investment. Not bad, right? Like all of a sudden now we are up to 400 bucks or 4,000 bucks. So we keep our money like riding on, on, on EWT energy web tokens because that's not a huge return, right? Just a couple bucks, we want more. But to be fair, we got in a little late to the game, but let's say you're someone like, I don't know, Randy, uh, who got in early and has $229,000 invested in energy web tokens. And Randy's investment doubles or it triples in a short period of time. Now he's looking at close to a million bucks and now he can sell off his crypto and make a bunch of money. And the rest of us who came in late to the game, we're the ones who end up losing. Uh, this is what's traditionally called a pump and dump scheme. Wait, what? Who came up with that name? Now I'm no financial expert. I'm certainly by no stretch of the imagination giving you any financial advice, but you can literally Google this info and learn about it in, in about five minutes. It, it, it goes like this. You use a smaller cryptocurrency that isn't traded a whole lot, like say uh, Energy Web. EWT, the Energy Web Token. Where you can inflate the price by getting enough people to buy in later in the game. And how do you find people to buy into it? Well, you could get someone like 
I don't know, say James Aspie, I don't know, who has hundreds of thousands of followers who trust him no matter what. I believe this is a potentially very lucrative financial investment for us all to make. Get him to invest his life savings. I've recently put in every single dollar, basically, of my life savings. And maybe you want to fly him out to Panama, pay for his plane ticket, and also fly in, I don't know, say like a videographer to, to make a video about the investment opportunity and market it to James's followers. I was duped by a guy named Randy who got me out to Panama to work on his energy web video. And to quote Randy, this video might double his investment alone. And what would be the next step after all of this? Sell it all. Which leads me to the question, is James Aspie the con or is he being conned? I think most critics look at him as a, as a con man at this point, right? A grifter. But I have to say, I feel like he's kind of right in the middle of this pyramid scheme, right? He may be throwing a, a bunch of followers under, under the bus, but is he doing it intentionally? I think he honestly feels like he's doing all of us and the movement a favor, which honestly I think speaks to his strategic and leadership abilities or lack thereof. But I think it's because he's been conned as well by the people above him on this pyramid scheme. But to me, Here's the real takeaway. We need to stop putting people on pedestals and pretending like they can't and aren't making mistakes. Let's stop pretending like they are the only ones with the keys to successful strategies. Let's not look to them to lead us no matter what. Instead, like let's recognize each other's skills and talents and amplify and celebrate each other. I don't know, let's invest in our own activism and, and the activism of our peers. It's okay to be excited and inspired by each other, but let's not prop people up so far on pedestals that they're beyond criticism, that they're beyond reproach. Let's encourage transparency. If you have an income through things like I don't know, a job or YouTube ads or promotions, like that's your business. I don't even know how much you're making, but if you are actively asking for donations to fund your activism, that's where there needs to be transparency. In my opinion, you need to show where your money or rather all of our money that we've donated, where that's going and how it's being used. Go to any nonprofit organization. You can look at their tax filings. You can look at their annual reports. You can see exactly how money is being divided up and being used. And it's my opinion that folks who are constantly asking for money to fund their activism should be clear as to how that money is actually funding their activism. And as I've said before, it's okay if some of that money's going to living expenses or rent or bills. Like that's allowing you to do activism, but it needs to be clear how much of it is going where. And finally, this responsibility shouldn't all fall onto their laps. We, as a community, we need to be responsible as to who we give to and support and amplify. Like James said, and I agree with him, people don't have to donate to him. To combat that, we need to build communities that support one another and amplify one another and allow us to grow together where we don't put all of our hopes for success in the laps of a handful of people and like i said in episode 78 the best way to get rid of pedestals is to organize around them make communities and organizations and campaigns that make pedestals obsolete <laughs>